Hi, welcome back to the south of France. It is a beautiful September morning. We've had a couple of days of rain, but now as Shirley Bassey sang, after the rain has gone and there is that wonderful clarity in the air, the sky is blue, the sea is azure, and everything in the world is back in its place. Now, today I'm on Saint Jean Cap Ferrat, which is one of the most beautiful stretches of land on the whole French Riviera. Midway between Nice and Monaco, it's got fantastic private beaches, it's got fantastic public beaches, it's got fantastic public footpaths that go right around the edge uh, on the, overlooking the sea, and of course it's got some of the most expensive villas on the face of the earth. But in this video, we're not going to be talking about big villas or super yachts. What we're going to be talking about is the autumn on the Riviera because this is my favorite time of year. The heat of the summer has dissipated. Summer's lease is almost up as I think Shakespeare wrote and it's time to get out there and do things again. There aren't the big crowds, the weather and temperature is perfect, you can actually climb hills and swim in secret seas etc. So in this video what I want to do is share with you my 10 favorite things to do on the French Riviera this autumn. Let's go. Before we get going, quick reminder to hit the button and subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications when a new video drops, which is every Sunday night. Right, no more adverts, on with the show. So, what is my first must do on the French Riviera this autumn. Well, it is this. It is Walk et Sentier Littoral. They are literally public footpaths which stretch right along this coastline. They are one of the most fantastic and completely free things to do here on the French Riviera. The one I'm on here goes right around Cap Ferrar. You can walk the entire Cap. Uh, I think you can probably see from that little map I put up, it looks a little bit like Italy. It's like a mini Italy, it's like a little boot. Now it's a long walk, it'll probably take you about three, three and a half hours to do the whole thing, so definitely bring some water. Maybe bring some sandwiches, maybe bring a seat. But uh, it is the most fantastic uh, footpath. Uh, much of it is pretty easy walking. There's the odd bit that is uh, a little bit more challenging, but I think if you look on the, uh, the link that I've put in the description below, you'll be able to find some information about which bits are the easiest, which bits are the hardest. And you can join it at various points on Cap Ferrar. You can join it at Paloma Beach. You can join it at the Plage de Fossette, which is where we've just left. You can join it sort of up by the Grand Hotel de Cap and you will get to see, as I say, incredible views over the Mediterranean, back towards Nice, uh, and you will also get to see some of the most incredible villas. Yes, you'll have to peek over the garden walls a little bit, but you will get to see fantastic bits of real estate. Uh, and if you get further round the path where we are now, you'll come to the Grand Hotel de Cap, which is one of the the great hotels of the world which has played host to, to uh, everyone and anyone. I mean, it's not had me, but you know, it's pretty good. Um, so yes, get out there and get on one of the Sentier Littorales. Um, if you're in Villefranche, you can take uh, the one from Rochambeau, which goes right along uh, towards Nice. It doesn't get you all the way into Nice, but it gets you quite a long way. It's quite a, quite a tough walk, that one. But it is fantastic and it leads me naturally on to the second of my uh, tips of what to do on the Riviera this autumn and that is do some secret swimming. Now what's secret swimming I hear you say? Well secret swimming is sort of something I invented particularly invented in lockdown <laughs> when uh, we weren't meant to be swimming. But of course, if you went along to hidden coves and hidden beaches, etc., you could do it now. Along that walk from Rochambeau in Villefranche towards Nice, 
uh, there are two or three fantastic places for swimming and for snorkeling there uh, and they're almost sort of they feel a little bit like a sort of rock pool you've got great views back up to the wonderful villa on the promontory which is often used uh, as a, a movie location and uh, i think using a big tv show in america in, uh, in france um, i don't think it's riviera but it, it's one of those um, but yeah it's a great way to uh, to get away from the crowds and to do some secret swimming and uh, it's a good thing to do if there's another lockdown fingers crossed Now, the Eileen Grey Villa is one of my favourite places to visit on the whole of the French Riviera. In fact, it's, uh, I, I'm so keen on it. I made a video about it. Um, I'll put a little thumbnail up in the corner there. Oh, and by the way, um, any of the other videos that I refer to that I've made in this film, we're going to put them in a separate playlist. And the playlist will be called simply 10 Great Things to Do on the French Riviera this autumn. So after you've watched this video, you can go and look at that playlist and you'll be able to watch in more detail uh, videos about some of these subjects that I'm talking about. But back to the Eileen Gray Villa. It is Eileen Gray's modernist masterpiece. Eileen Gray, female Irish architect, wonderful, uh, wonderful creator. You will recognize so many of her pieces now, even if you've never heard her name. And this villa lay for many, many years in ruins. It was squatted, I think, at one stage in the war, the Nazis were in it. All kinds of things have gone on in it. Uh, it's full of stories, including her great contretemps with uh, the architect Le Corbusier, all of which is in my other villa. But it has now been completely uh, fully restored. So it is the perfect time to book a tour, go around there. And even if you think, oh, not sure, modernist architecture's for me, the story of her and Corbusier and her of her lover, Jean Badovici, I think he was called, uh, it's really fantastic and I mean the views are spectacular uh, and you'll also get to see Cabousier's cabin on uh, which is you know a, I think actually it's a world heritage site I mean it looks a bit like a hut but it's a fantastic hut I love it uh, a machine for living anyway so that is something wonderful to do and as I say when you visited E1027 or before you visit E1027 you can go down onto the beach, the beach where Corbusier died, and you can walk all the way into Monton. So that is a great day out, but you do need to book, and you do need to book the right tour, the right guide, uh, obviously in the right language. Another great thing to do in the Riviera this autumn is get on your bike. Not least because the brand new cycle path now goes from Villefranche right the way to Nice, which means you can go to Nice and then you can go onwards right the way to Cannes. It really is a terrific ride. It's pretty level. You can hire an e-bike in Nice uh, if you don't fancy doing the work um, or you can hire some of those e-scooters. I'm not sure you're allowed to ride them on the cycle path. Um, but it now is a, a path which literally will take you from Villefranche with the odd little bit where you have to get on the road but really only tiny bits uh, and you can cycle right the way around the port of Nice which is fantastic right the way around uh, the headland which is uh, uh, where everybody loses their hat and hence it's called Chapeau and uh, into Nice along the Promenade des Anglais right the way up to the airport beyond the airport Cap 3000 all of that um, uh, and it's a, a wonderful way to spend the day. And if you get tired, if you get halfway there and you think I've had enough, well, the cycle path more or less exactly follows the train line. So there is always a fallback position. All of the trains will take bikes. They've all got carriages, four bikes. Even if you can't get into the bike carriage, you'll probably get away with just propping it up for a few stops. Incidentally, I'm sure lots of you have already got ideas about what's good to do on the Riviera in autumn. If you have, please, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Uh, it might be something I'll get to go and do a film about, or it might be just something that other people can pick up on and gives them an idea of, uh, of a nice day out. So comment section below, give us your ideas. There are spectacular gardens along this coastline many of them in Monton. Monton uh, was an area of course that uh, 
uh, many of the, the well-to-do European and many British aristocrats came to in the uh, 18th, 19th century and some of them to pass the time built the most fantastic gardens and they're still there they imported flora and fauna from around the world and bougainvillea i made a video about bougainvillea down here that's uh, put a little uh, <coughs> thumbnail in the corner all about jean barre the cross dresser who introduced bougainvillea to the french riviera fact um, but yeah, do visit some of those gardens. The gardens like the Hanbury Gardens, La Serre de la Madonna. Again, I'm going to put links uh, in the description below. Um, they're an absolutely delightful way to spend a day and they'll transport you back to a sort of a bygone era of the gentleman gardener uh, who came here uh, and set up home and built these kind of, these fantastical I guess, to some extent, monuments to self. And don't be snobby. Don't forget that one of the most incredible gardens here is actually one of the most obvious. It's in Es Village, which is a tourist hotspot, but in September is a little bit quieter. And certainly this September will be a lot quieter because we still haven't got cruise ships back here. So it's a perfect time to go. I was there recently doing one of my live tours on Hago, uh, and I've got to be honest, I, I went up to the gardens thinking, oh God, I really don't want to do this. I'm doing it for the, for the, um, the people on the tour. And I was blown away. The views are so spectacular. It's so easy to overlook because it's a bit of a tourist cliche, but the exotic garden in Es Village, it was built uh, after the exotic garden in Monaco, which incidentally is closed for restoration at the minute. Um, so if you want to see an exotic garden this uh, with with amazing views which i think monaco also has uh, then this this is probably the one to go to um, and it's only about six euros and you'll get to see uh, the wonderful medieval village go early in the morning go late in the afternoon catch the sunset Another thing that I love to do in the autumn is to visit the Chateau in Nice. Now again, it's a bit like Es Village. You think, oh, it's a bit of a tourist cliche. The Chateau is where Nice began, where Nice began as Nike town. True that, no trainers involved though. Um, but it's the Chateau that overlooks Nice. It's where, where the, uh, the city was before it sort of spread down into the old town. But not only is there an incredible cascade or waterfall, uh, uh, and amazing views both of the port and across the rooftops of the old town and right across to the new town it's a brilliant place to come actually if you want to get hold of the geography of nice so if if it's uh, you've just arrived in the town and you want to sort of see what the layout is then get onto the chateau because you will see you'll see the city from both sides but when you are there do not overlook the cemeteries there are two uh, cemeteries. There is the uh, Christian Cemetery, uh, which is again spectacular. I mean, spectacular architecture, spectacular tombstones, uh, really incredible with incredible views. French cemeteries always have good views. Um, but there is also the Jewish Cemetery. Now, the Jewish Cemetery is not as spectacular in terms of the tombstones, but you will discover the incredible story of what happened to the Jewish people in Nice at the end of the Second World War when the Nazis finally took occupation. Um, that was a good, I slipped then. I slipped, did you see that? <laughs> um, and uh, uh, because of course uh, Nice was, was run on behalf of the Germans by the Italians for most of the war. Uh, and then right at the end, the Nazis took over and it is a quite horrific story of what happened to the Jewish people and it will shock you. But it is well worth going up there, wonderful views, great history and yet again it's completely and utterly free. So there up ahead of us is Paloma Beach and I say absolutely beautiful and uh, it's one of my secret beaches because secret beaches are fantastic things to go to particularly out just just at the end of the season because the crowds aren't there you're going to get lots of space uh, and it really will feel like you've come somewhere completely magical on Cap Ferrar there's Paloma Beach there's Plage de Passable 
uh, which is a fantastic beach looking uh, directly back towards Villefranche. Uh, and also, good tip, it's, uh, it's quite shallow. It's quite easy to get in uh, and out. And because it's quite shallow, it's, uh, it often stays that bit warmer than the Villefranche beach later into the season. Of course, you can more or less swim here up to Christmas. You need to be a bit hardy to swim in December. January, February, I find quite tough, unless, uh, unless I borrow bit Mr. Boo's wetsuit, you know? Now, I say this with slightly tongue-in-cheek because me and Mr. Boo attempted this. In fact, we were going to make a whole film about it. And it's a great train ride up into grass, and then it's a good cycle to find uh, Edith Piaf's villa and the reason we were going is because we were really intrigued that it's not true that Edith Piaf died in Paris. She actually died in that villa uh, and they secretly transported the body to Paris because of course the little sparrow was regarded as such a Parisian that it wouldn't have done for her to have died um, in a sort of holiday home in, uh, in the south of France. Uh, but anyway, me and Mr. Boo decided we would cycle, well I decided and he reluctantly played along, we would cycle up to, uh, to Edith's villa. The problem was that, well, Mr. Boo had a bit of a problem. He, he, got, a, he got a puncture. So we spent most of the afternoon in decathlon, which we managed to find a decathlon right up in grass. Uh, <laughs> and we managed to mend the puncture and then we ploughed on up this mountainous road till we got to, I think it's called La Bastide, or it was, Edith Piaf's villa, uh, only to discover that, well, it had been altered quite a lot, uh, and not least uh, altered in the way that they put a giant wall around it, so I, um, we couldn't see in. Uh, so um, so it, in the end, I, I resorted to getting this giant stick out, and I'm not going to show you the results, because I think Mr. Boo decided it was probably illegal what I was doing. Uh, and, and the, the images weren't that great anyway. So it just goes to prove that when uh, Edith Piaf sang No Regrets, it's not always true. On that day, when we went searching for her, we had lots of regrets. Another great thing to do in this region in the autumn is to uh, visit a gorge. Uh, we went to this one, which is the, uh, the Gorge du Blavé. Uh, which is not too far, I think, from Seon, when we were staying with our friends up there. Uh, and it's absolutely wonderful. Again, it's completely free. It's a great thing to do with the kids. Um, the kids will absolutely love it. Some of the footpaths here are a little bit treacherous. You need to, be, uh, need to pick your route and wear some good boots. But there's some really nice picnic areas. It's quite a nice thing to do if it's a very sunny day because it's quite shady when you get down there. Uh, the kids can paddle. There's wildlife, uh, it really is sort of escape into another world. And my final autumn favourite is watching the sunrises and sunsets because they really can be quite spectacular at this time of year. That's given you some ideas for what you want to do this autumn on the French Riviera. Uh, if you've got some better ideas of your own, please leave uh, those ideas in the uh, comments section below. I uh, would love it if you give this video a like, it helps the algorithm hugely and if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to receive notifications when a new video drops, which is every Sunday. Uh, I will see you on the next one. Take care.